Today we are going to do the magnesium and hydrochloric acid forming hydrogen gas experiment in this device called the udiometer in order to measure the value of the universal ideal gas constant R. The equation that we're going to use, the reaction is going to have uh, magnesium metal and hydrochloric acid reacting to form magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. And we have to balance that with a two in front of the HCl. And so what we're going to do is use magnesium as the limiting reactant and we're going to form hydrogen gas stoichiometrically use the moles of the hydrogen gas as one of the uh, one of the input numbers to go into the PV equals NRT equation to calculate the ideal gas constant R. The udiometer is a long tube that when you hold it with the open end down the numbers read from top to bottom 0 down to 50 which is going to be uh, helping us to measure the volume of the gas that's inside the udiometer, the volume of the gas that's, that's generated by the reaction. To get started, I'm going to take a mass, uh, strip of magnesium. I've already pre-cut this strip to the right length. And I'm going to measure the mass using a three-digit balance. And the mass of this strip of magnesium, and you should record this in your data table down below, is 0.039 grams. Now even though we're only at two sig figs for the mass of the magnesium, we are going to use calculations to three sig figs for the rest of the experiment. I'm now going to take the magnesium and wrap it around the thermometer to give me a loose coil. I don't want this to be too tight otherwise it might not react well, but it's got to be small enough to fit into the udiometer. And I'm going to then take this strip of copper wire. Copper won't react with the hydrochloric acid, but it's going to hold the magnesium in place while this reaction takes place. And give it a twist there to hold the magnesium on and shake to make sure it doesn't come off. And then I just want to insert it temporarily into the end of the udiometer and give it a little hook so that when I do eventually put it into the solution, then it will hold in place. Next I'm going to take about 15 milliliters of 3 molar hydrochloric acid. That's about a quarter of the strength that you can buy in the store. I know we haven't covered solutions yet. And put that into the udiometer. Obviously I have to put it in with the udiometer upside down. We are going to eventually fill the udiometer so that there's nothing in it but liquid. And that way, when the gas gets generated, the gas will displace the liquid. And I'm going to fill this all the way to the top. Well, this is just green colored water. The green coloring of the water is just there to help us visualize the volume in the udiometer when we get to the end of the reaction. Now the hydrochloric acid is more dense than the water, so it does stay at the bottom. I'm going to fill it all the way to the top using the surface tension of water to keep the udiometer, uh, to keep the level above the top of the udiometer. And I'm going to temporarily put this into the, into the burette holder. Even though it's a udiometer, not a burette, we still use the burette holder. And I can then put the assembly with the magnesium into the, into the udiometer. I'm going to put a one hole stopper into the, into the end of the udiometer and get some water to come out the top. If the water doesn't come out the top, what I'm going to do is use a pipette that has a very narrow opening here and try to get this hole in the, in the stopper completely filled with water. That way there won't be any air bubbles. Next, I'm going to take the udiometer and invert it into the graduated cylinder filled up with water. I have this in a catch basin so that it will catch any water that overflows. And the hydrochloric acid is now falling down into the bottom of the udiometer, or now the other end, 
hard to say which one is the top and which is the bottom. So this is the top now, falling down to the bottom of the udiometer. Let me raise that up a little bit so you can see when the reaction starts to take place. And then I'm going to pause the video uh, while the reaction takes place until the reaction is done because that's not really a very important um, piece of us for us to see that whole thing. So as the hydrochloric acid hits the magnesium, bubbles start to form. Well, let me do this. Let me bring that up close so you can see a little bit better about what's going on here. So there are the bubbles forming, the hydrogen gas is coming off. And as you look up to the top, you can start to see the hydrogen gas accumulating at the top of the udiometer. This is going to take about five minutes to go. Okay, so the reaction is done now. Uh, while you were waiting, we took the uh, atmospheric pressure and found that the atmospheric pressure today is 774.2 millimeters of mercury. You know what, let me write down the mass of the, of the magnesium. So 0 0.040, no, 0 0.039 grams magnesium as well. So you would think that now we'd be able to measure the volume in the udiometer. The problem is that the way this is set up, that this level of water inside the udiometer is actually, is actually helping to hold up the column of gas that we call the atmosphere. And so this is providing some of the pressure that's needed to hold up the atmosphere. So the pressure that's inside the udiometer right now is not correct. We can't measure the pressure, pressure inside the udiometer. We have no way of putting a gauge inside there. So the only way for us to know what the pressure inside the udiometer is, is to know what the pressure outside is and to make them equalize. So if you remember what I've been saying, that whenever we have levels, the levels have to be equal for the pressures to be equal. And at this point, they're not. So what I'm going to do, and before I actually finish this, let me just show you, as I push this down, you can see, if I push this up and down, you can see inside the udiometer, 
the level of the liquid is going up and down, changing the volume of the gas. So I'm going to lower this into the graduated cylinder until the level of water inside and outside are identical. And then we're going to read the volume off the udiometer. I will bring the camera up close so you can see what the volume is. Let me be a little lower. It's tricky because I'm playing with two meniscuses here. So if I bring the camera up close, you'll be able to see, hopefully it won't get out of focus, the volume of the udiometer. So you can see the udiometer, udiometer reads 36, 37, 38. And I'm going to say that that looks like it's right at 39.0 milliliters. So that's our last measurement. Let me write that on the board. Oh. Sorry, that's not our last measurement. We have one more measurement to go. So the volume of the gas in the udiometer, we said was 39.0, watch those sig figs. And then the last measurement we do need to do is to make the temperature measurement. We're going to measure the temperature in the water and we're going to assume that the temperature in the water is the same as the temperature of the gas in the udiometer and the temperature in the water, you don't need to see this measurement, is 22.4 degrees Celsius. So now you have all the data that you need to calculate the R value. Now, there are a couple of tricky calculations and we can discuss these calculations when we meet uh, in the next classroom.